This is lesson 1-1, using variables. You will need to copy these vocabulary words into your notes, leaving space so that you can add notes and examples as we go along. You will need to pause the video because I will continue going on as if you had already had all this stuff down. A variable is exactly what it sounds like. It comes from the root word which means to vary, which means it can change. It's a letter that stands for a number. One day it can equal two, the next day it could equal seven. It can and will change. Examples of variables are P, T, X, Z, etc. When you make your variables, make sure they do not look like numbers. You'll notice I put a tail on my T and I crossed my Z so that my T didn't look like a 1 and my Z did not look like a 2. Variables to avoid. I, O, and L. Because I's can look like 1's, L's can look like 1's, and O's can look like zeros. An algebraic expression is a mathematical phrase that can include numbers, variables, and operation symbols. It is a phrase, just like in English, a phrase does not have a, a complete thought to it. It doesn't start with a capital letter and it doesn't end with a form of punctuation. In algebra, an algebraic expression is a phrase. It's part of an equation, but not all of the equation. It has to contain a variable in order to be algebraic. Otherwise, it's just numerical. Examples of algebraic expressions, x plus 6, 2y squared minus 9, 3z to the fourth plus 5x minus q. All of those are algebraic expressions. They contain at least one variable and mathematical operators between them. An equation is the whole sentence. It, it's like in English, starts with a capital letter, ends with a form of punctuation, has to have a subject and a predicate. In mathematics, an equation is a mathematical sentence that has to have an equal sign. A good example of a mathematical sentence that includes an equal sign, x plus 6 equals 5. That is an equation because it has an equal sign. It happens to be an algebraic equation because it contains the variable x. As long as it contains a variable, it's algebraic. If I have 5 plus 3 equals 8, this is also an equation. It just happens to be a numerical equation because it contains no variables. An open sentence is an equation that contains one or more variables. What makes it different from an equation is you cannot say whether or not it is true or false. For example, up above we see the, 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 the phrase 5 plus 3 equals 8. That equation is true because 5 plus 3 does indeed equal 8. But we also see this equation, x plus 6 equals 5. That happens to be an open sentence, because until you solve for x, or I tell you what x is equal to, you cannot tell me whether it is true or false. And other examples of an open sentence is anything that contains a variable. 3x plus 6 equals 9 is an open sentence, because until I tell you what x is equal, you cannot tell me if it's true or false. When we use variables, it's very important that we understand the English translation of words that people use and what mathematical operators those happen to be hooked to. For example, our basic mathematical operators, add, subtract, multiply, and divide. Certain words in the English language tell us that we are going to be adding, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing. As you can see here, I've listed the, the most popular ones that come up. Other words that mean add are sum, total, more or more than, increase, in addition, greater or greater than, and add. All of these words in some way, shape, or form mean that I am supposed to add. Words that mean subtraction, difference, less or less than, fewer, decreased, take away, minus, or subtract. Many of these words are the opposite of the addition words. All of these mean to subtract. When you multiply or divide, there are a lot less words to use. In multiplication, the most common ones are times, like two times, three times, four times, or product. 
Once in a while, you'll see the word of, which also implies multiplication. But be careful, sometimes it's just part of the sentence that is English and not related to math. For division, quotient is your mathematical term, divided or divided by, or when you're trying to separate into equal groups. What we're going to do today is we're going to learn how to translate words and, and phrases into variable expressions and equations. The most important thing is to make sure you're using things in the proper order. You should know that addition and multiplication are commutative. Addition and multiplication are what we call commutative. That means order does not matter. 5 plus 3 is the same as 3 plus 5. However, if you get in the habit of writing them in the right order when you're adding, you will put them in the right order when you're subtracting. What do I mean by this? Let's look at the first example. 7 more than n. Here we have a phrase that says more than. More than implies that something came before whatever after came after the word more than. So in other words, whatever comes after the more than actually comes first. So n in this case comes before the 7. Because if I say he is 7 years more than I am, he was born first, which means he came before I did. So in this particular case, we should have n plus 7. We could have 7 plus n because it is commutative, but if you learn to write it in the proper way when you're adding, then when we get to a problem like number 2, you will have no problem doing it in the proper order when you're subtracting. Here we have 6 less than b, which means b came first. b comes before the 6 less than. We must write it in the order of b minus 6, because b minus 6 is vastly different than 6 minus b. Number 3, the quotient of n and 7. Quotient means to divide. We want to write this as an algebraic expression, not a mathematical expression. So we're not going to use this form of the word of the division symbol. We're going to use the fraction bar because the fraction bar is another form of division. When you're doing quotients, they go in the order that you read them. N and 7 means N is divided by 7. That is the algebraic correct way of writing. Even though this is also correct, this is not algebraic. And since we're in algebra class, we should get used to writing things in algebraic terms. Number four, four times the quantity eight plus a number d. This has two steps to it. The word quantity means there's a group of them. If I have a quantity of water on my desk, that means I have a bunch of water. It may be contained in a water bottle, I may have several water bottles, but I have more than one drop of water on my desk. So, what we have to do is if we need to multiply that quantity by, the, by 4, we have to make sure that we indicate that everything in that quantity is going to be multiplied by 4. We do this with symbols of inclusion. Symbols of inclusion are parentheses, brackets, and braces. For the easiest part, we will use parentheses. So, we're going to use parentheses to indicate that 8 plus a number d is going to have to be multiplied by 4. All of 8 plus a number d has to be multiplied by 4. So that we can show people that we're going to multiply all of that by 4, we put it in parentheses, and then we place the 4 on the outside. That means all of 8 plus d will be multiplied by 4. Last but not least, we have to be able to define a variable to write an algebraic phrase or equation. All we're doing when we're defining a variable is we're telling people what we're letting our letter stand for. It could be the number of weeks. It could be the number of tickets somebody is going to purchase. It could be the number of pairs of shoes sold or magazines steam subscriptions sold. It just tells people what we're letting our variable stand for. So if we have 10 more than twice a number, this is my variable. A nice easy way to define it, I'm just going to let n equal my number. n stands for number, works for me. So 10 more than twice a number, I'm literally going to just remember that the word more than means twice a number has to come first. This comes first. 
So twice the number would be 2n, and then 10 more than that would be added to 10. So we have 10 more than twice the number. Number two, the sum of twice a number and 31. This one doesn't have a van in it, so the order doesn't matter. Sum means we're going to add. Twice a number means two times a number, and I'm going to let again n equal my number. So I have two times a number, the sum of that, so plus, and 31 just becomes 31. Literally read it left from right and put all the symbols that go in the right places and it will read just fine. Last but not least, we need to write an algebraic equation. An algebraic equation has an equal sign. So we know that it will be slightly different than an algebraic expression. The total income from selling tickets to a school play for $5 each. I actually will have two variables here. One variable will stand for the total income, and the other variable will stand for the number of tickets I sold. Because neither one of these is told to us how much it is. So I'm just going to let uh, x equal my total income, and I'm going to let t equal my number of tickets. So, having that done, I have defined my variables. I now just need to simply translate this into a phrase. Total income x from selling tickets to a school play for $5 each. My total income will be the number of tickets I sell times the price of the ticket. So my total income equals the number of tickets I sell, which I have no idea how many I'm going to sell, so I'm going to let that be t, but I do know that I'm selling them for $5 each, so I just multiply the t by 5, and remember, we don't use any operators when we use algebra because a letter next to a number implies multiplication.